What's going on guys? It's Bucky and welcome to your second chemistry lab tutorial. Now in this video I want to talk to you guys about test tubes. Now test tubes can actually be used for many different purposes. Now some of the most common ways that people use test tubes are first to mix solutions. They add their solution right in the test tube and swirl it around getting it nice and mixed together. Um, another thing is that people often heat samples right in your test tube. Go ahead and put it right over a flame, heat it up and it speeds up the chemical reaction. And another thing is if you just have a regular old chemical reaction with no flame or anything, you can observe the chemical reaction right in your test tube. Now if you know that you're going to be storing samples in the test tube, what I recommend doing is getting a rubber stopper for your test tubes because this is basically like a cork, just a solid piece of rubber but it's made specifically for test tubes and whenever you store samples in here it just keeps them nice and you know keeps them from falling out and another thing that I would recommend getting is a stopper let me see if I can get a good camera angle a rubber stopper with a hole in it and actually you want to grab a couple of these and the reason that you would do this is because not for storing samples but sometimes we're going to be heating up chemicals and we're going to want to capture the gases or the fumes from the chemical reaction so you actually use your rubber stopper with a hole and put a piece of glass or plastic tubing in there and that is how you capture the gases from a chemical reaction so again remember that whenever you buy test tubes make sure to get solid rubber stoppers or corks and also rubber stoppers with a hole in them for whenever we want to capture fumes now it's best to have a wide variety of test tubes in different sizes and you also want to have a mixture of plastic and glass test tubes if you can only choose one I would probably recommend glass now some of the more common size test tubes, this one right here, these are my favorite, these are actually 16 by 150 millimeter and what this means is pretty much the width of the test tube and also the height. So um, those are the ones that I use most often. The standard size if you probably were to buy only one size in a set, you probably want to stick with 18 by 150 because like I said that's the most standard size test tube. I just like 16 by 150, that's my favorite. And another thing that you definitely want to do is you want to get some kind of test tube rack. This is probably my favorite one. This is an old wood one that I got from actually uh, someone that used to be my science teacher. And this is another rack. But you want a rack because it's a lot easier to store your test tubes. And also whenever you're just observing chemical reactions, you can line them up nice and neat. And it's a lot easier to observe if you have a rack like this. So again a bunch of different sizes, a mixture of glass and plastic, but if you can only get one size, stick with 16 by 150 or 18 by 150. 